word laser means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. A laser generates electromagnetic waves. Unlike an incandescent lamp, a laser can produce monochromatic light combined with a very high intensity and long coherence length. Another important property of lasers is the strong bundling of the generated light beam and the associated low intensity loss at a distance. Depending on the generation mechanism, laser light can also be polarized. The first laser, a ruby laser, was developed in 1960 by Theodore Maiman. The first gas laser, a helium neon laser, was also developed in 1960 by Ali Javan, William Bennett, and Donald Harriot. Today, there are numerous technical and scientific applications of lasers, for example, laser pointers, show lasers, lasers in industrial production, laser diodes in CD and DVD players, lasers in photocopy machines, and lasers in medicine, or lasers for measuring the distance between the Earth and the Moon. In the following experiment, different properties of laser light are investigated using a helium neon laser. In general, lasers consist of three components, an active medium, a resonator that is for example made of mirrors and a pump source. If one conceives of a laser as an optical oscillator, the active medium serves as an amplifier, the resonator as feedback and the pump source as an energy supplier. In our design, helium and neon are mixed in a ratio of 90 to 10% in a thin glass cylinder. The gas mixture forms the active medium. Due to the better visibility, we also show a completely transparent glass structure in addition to the examined laser structure. Within the glass cylinder, there is also a filament to which a high voltage can be applied. At the end of the cylinder are Brewster windows, which are tilted by the Brewster angle of about 45 degrees. These are used because light that is not polarized parallel to the plane of incidence is not weakened by reflection. This minimizes intensity loss when light enters or leaves the windows. Another consequence is that the outgoing light is linearly polarized in a direction that is not parallel to the plane of incidence. Further outside are the optical resonators, that is a perfect and a semi-transparent mirror, or as in our design, two semi-transparent mirrors. Through them, the light emitted in the active medium can be reflected, returned to the active medium and thus be fed back again. The laser radiation is amplified. First we switch on the laser, that is we generate a gas discharge in the glass cylinder by applying a voltage to the filament. The gas begins to glow pinkish red. If you hold an optical grid in front of the laser and look through it at the luminous gas cylinder, you can see its light broken down into a discrete line spectrum. You can see the so-called laser modes. If you hold a screen or white sheet of paper behind the semi-transparent mirrors, you can see a very intense and highly concentrated red light spot. If you hold a screen or a white sheet of paper behind the semi-transparent mirrors, you can see a very intense and highly concentrated red light spot. If you hold a screen or a white sheet of paper between the Brewster windows and the semi-transparent mirrors, the laser beam disappears immediately. We now project the laser beam through another mirror on a wall. If one holds a linear polarization filter behind the semi-transparent mirrors and puts it horizontally, the laser beam is nearly unchanged. If one puts the polarization filter vertically, the spot of the laser beam on the wall nearly completely disappears. If the gas laser with Brewster windows is replaced by a solid state laser with the mirrors placed directly on the active medium, the light spot can be observed on the screen regardless how the polarization filter is oriented. When high voltage is applied, free electrons are created by gas discharge. Helium atoms are energetically excited by collisions with the electrons. These in turn collide again with neon atoms and excite them into excited 4s and 5s states for population inversion. A population inversion means that more electrons are in an energetically higher level than in an energetically low level. This is absolutely necessary for laser operation and can only be achieved by supplying energy in the form of pumping. In the helium neon laser, the filament and the resulting electron bursts act as an energy pump. By transitions within the neon atoms to the 4p or 3p level, photons can now be emitted by spontaneous emission. The gas begins to glow. The emitted light is radiated in all directions. The part of the light that is emitted in the direction of the mirrors is reflected there and returned to the luminous gas in the gas cylinder. There, a stimulated emission now takes place, that is, a light-matter interaction in which one photon of the reflected light, especially at 632.8 nanometers, stimulates a neon gas atom to emit another photon of the same wavelength. Make two from one. Two photons now move through the gas cylinder and the Brewster window to the other mirror where they are reflected in return to the luminous gas in gas cylinders. There, two more stimulated emissions now takes place. Two becomes four and so on. 
This exponential amplification of the intensity of the horizontally running light beam continues as long as there are enough neon atoms in the excited 4S or 5S state. The result is an intense, exactly horizontal, highly focused, monochromatic and horizontally linearly polarized light beam at 632.8 nanometers in wavelength. Since solid state lasers do not need exit windows for the transition from the active medium to the air, to the mirror and back again, the laser light is also not linearly polarized. Linear polarization is therefore not a property of every laser but depends on the design of the laser. If energy is pumped into an active medium, a population inversion occurs there. That is, more electrons are in an energetically excited state than in the ground state. During the transition to the ground state, photons of a certain energy can be emitted by spontaneous emission. If these are reflected back into the active medium, for example by mirrors as optical resonators, they can interact with the medium and cause it to emit another photon of exactly the same energy. This process is called stimulated emission. This amplification of light can take place as long as the population inversion exists. For this purpose, energy must be constantly added to the system by pumping. All in all, a laser, that is light amplification through the stimulated emission of radiation, is created.